except when it applies. Um, somebody did something to me, so I have to forgive them. Mm -hmm. And the idea is somebody did something to me, and I forgive them, and I'm supposed to forget it, and that sort of thing, which is great. And at that stage of things, that's wonderful. But I happen to believe that we should be forgiving all the time. When I see books, I want to send love to these books. I want to send love to this chair. I want to send love to each of you. Anybody that I meet, the atmosphere, the sun, the stars, the mountains, particularly the stars and the mountains, would send love back to us. But because every, everything, as far as I'm concerned, and I mean that, everything, that dimension of things, every single thing that comes to our attention is an object to be sending love to. Which is wonderful because it's filling us with the wonder of new love coming to us as we're for, for giving that love. And the forgetting is when that love, as they say, what you send, what goes out, what goes around, comes around, that forgiving where we're sending love all over the place. In fact, the tunnel that we see when we're going out and our find our body to some, in some other dimension, uh, that love, of course, goes to that tunnel just like every place else. And what I think is important about that is when we see the energy that we have sent in the tunnel or somewhere else where we don't think we've been before, and we recognize that energy is part of our blueprint, part of the energy of our, excuse me, shake the sand here, <laughs> and this one, very good, this one, and feel the heat, feel the heat. Sure. Feel the heat. Feel the heat. Sir. Feel the heat. Feel the heat. Okay. That yeah, heat. Did you get George? Warm physicists. That heat is love. That heat is violet flame. That heat is sacred fire. That heat is chi. That heat is prana. That heat is any name you can come up with. But what we just did is I am pressed my blueprint on each of your hands and you, me, and at some point we'll go somewhere else and we'll shake hands with somebody else. And by that way, our blueprint will go around the world and come back to us. Ron? Yes. I had a, a thought when you were talking about forgiving that one point it came to me that if you look at the word forgiving, because most of me think of well, I'll, I'll let them off the hook. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll forgive them. It automatically comes up that, well, I, I was holding something back. But the word itself actually says, I'm in favor of, I'm forgiving. Mm -hmm. Giving ahead right? of time. Giving. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. forgiving, being yeah. in favor of giving. Exactly. You know, so it changed the energy of just the understanding. Have yeah. you ever run into any people that have never thought of it like that? I, probably. I think most people think about, well, I'm not going to, you know, they think about something that's difficult. I'm not going to. I'm not going to forgive them, or I don't know if I can do that. But the, 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 the transcending quality is like what you said. I'm just giving, I'm sending out this energy, whether it's transmutation or chi or it is transportation. Or love. I think it's worth really holding on to. Carol and Casey did a radio show on uh, uh, PBS in California. Or, no, not PBS, uh, like KPFA Pacifica. Okay. Um, she is a syndicated. Um, she never thought about it. I heard her simply mention it. Now, she's about 35 or 40 years old, and she never thought of the word forgiving in that manner. Hmm. Well, Lord, what I mean. yeah. you're absolutely right. That's why so we're doing this class. Because so many people have not thought about a lot of things. And my only, <laughs> my only idea <laughs> in doing this is to sort of jog our attention to the idea that we are walking around radiating beings of light and breathing sacred fire, violet flame, and Holy Spirit and 
and all these terms, she and, and, and uh, all the time. We don't have to go get the Holy Spirit. We're breathing it all the time. We're breathing it in, we're breathing it out. And like what's his face, um, Lord Maitreya says that we should be visualizing oceans of via fame spreading across uh, America or anywhere else. And I was wanted to mention this, anybody who's seen this picture of Lord Maitreya, I happened to be in India when, uh, in 1980, and we, we walked into this cave, not a cave, but an underground cellar kind of thing, and this statue was in a, a what you call an alcove, with a, here's a thing and, and a little indent, and it's sitting here about this tall. And whoever the guy was who was a photographer, uh, took forever to get a, get a picture, but that's the picture that he got. Are there other? And at that time, I didn't have, know who Lord Mike was at all. Is that the only one, only figurine that looks like that? No, on the cover of the book, of some of the books about Lord Mike, there's a, there's a side view, and there's other little things. Oh, while we're in India, I'd like to say something about what happened to. Uh, me. Anybody know Frank Toth, mother's bodyguard? Okay. Yeah. Frank? Did anybody know Robson Longwell? FBI guy? Robson Longwell? Huh? I was talking the other day. Remember Robson? He, he was married to Louisiana? Okay. What's the name of the, her bodyguard? Frank Toth. Frank, he was a special Which? agent of the FBI, wasn't he? No. Oh, that was William Vespino. Oh, that was not, yeah, Vespino. Yeah. We, we came to this place called Sarnath. Sarnath is supposed to be where Buddha gave his first dictation. I mean his first uh, sermon. As soon as we get out of the car, an Indian over here on the left flank, maybe 100 feet away at least, started yelling. We're walking this way. There's me, Frank, Mother, Robson, and 15 or 20 other people. And he's moving along, we're moving along, going towards this big Buddha. And since, as you imagine, it's a huge Buddha because it's where he gave his first sermon with a big thing over the top. We get there, this guy's still yelling over, over here. Mother says, lift keep the kids up on the Buddha. And this guy goes bananas. These kids climbing up on the Buddha. <laughs> and Mother says, well, if anybody deserves to be standing on this Buddha platform, these children do. So everybody gets them all up there. This guy can always stand it. So here's Robson, and here's me, and here's Frank, and here's Mother. And this guy's charging down this hill. Now, you know, Frank taught Taekwondo, and he was big on breaking blocks and breaking, that is, as we talked about doing that, and breaking boards and this and that and the next thing. In fact, he taught Sean week after week, but I never did see them break anything. I just heard about it and assumed they did. They did. I took class. I see did you? And, and, and I'm glad. To it, I have pictures of it. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, stored my faith in something. Yeah. <laughs> here's Mother's back at my left side here. And here's and, and, and Frank is between her and, and I. Robin turns around, this guy's running at Robin, he said, what do I do? And he turns around, he said, you keep your eyes right on him, you don't turn around this way. So he looks back at the guy, the guy kept coming. Mother said, Frank, I'm tired of people touching me. If that guy comes anywhere near me, I want you to deck him. <laughs> I turned around, whoa, did Mother say that? <laughs> anyway, here comes the guy, and here's Frank. And he pushes Frank, and Frank pushes him back. And he pushes Frank, and Frank pushes him back like the cool kids in the, you know, in the schoolyard. And I'm thinking, what is this Taekwondo stuff at? Anyway, he kept pushing the guy, and the guy finally got tired and, and left. Later that day, I said, Frank, how come you didn't deck that guy? Right. And he said, well, you know, um, mother knows. Uh, you know, you can't just do this and that, and, and you know, karma and blah, blah, blah. Said, Frank, what do you think the karma is for not doing what the guru told you? <laughs> and he laughed some more, and, and that was that, and it was over. But, um, uh, 
Mother was right. When we got into Benares, the, the beggars are trained, the kids who are begging are trained to do what they do. And they go around in packs. And when somebody gives, if he gave me some money, all, the whole gang would be over here wanting some money too. And so we formed a V shape and sort of was like a football V where mother was here, Frank was in the front, and we were here, and, and everybody sort of opened up as we came through the crowd. At least that's the way it's supposed to work, and did most of the time. Okay, then I wanted to uh, mention some things about uh, the military.